Good morning, everybody. Bright and early this morning, time to make a video. Contrary to what you may think, I do start off with coffee in the morning, not beer. So today in this video, I want to talk about camp shoes for backpacking, the multi uses of them. You know, you get to camp, oftentimes you want to get out of the, the shoes or boots that you may be wearing and give your feet a little bit of a break and still want to be able to like walk around at camp. So sandals, camp shoes, definitely something that beginners may not think about until you do a couple trips and you realize that it would be really nice to have something to uh, walk around and camp in. Some of them also doubling as like a uh, water crossing shoe. So I'm going to go over a few options here of things that I know people use, uh, what I use. So my first couple backpacking trips, I didn't bring any camp shoe and I actually would just walk around the camp barefoot, which is kind of a cool feeling in itself. Um, if you're someone that really doesn't like getting dirty though, I could see where a lot of people really would want a camp shoe and I eventually came to that point where I just wanted to be a little bit more protected walking around at camp. So the idea of a camp shoe is you get to camp, you've done however many miles in the day, you want to take your shoes off or your boots off, give your feet time to relax, dry out if you've been crossing water all day, and you want to just put something on comfortable that you can get around in that's a different type of footwear than what you've been in all day. So a popular camp shoe that I personally have never tried, but I need to address it because I see them all over the place. <laughs> I want to say like, I don't know, seven times out of 10 when I pass a random backpacker on the trail, they got a pair of these strapped to their backpack and that is Crocs. So I've actually never, not only have I never backpacked with a pair of Crocs, I've never owned a pair of Crocs. I've tried them on not my cup of tea, but they are decently lightweight. I just looked up, depending on the size, they can weigh anywhere from six to eight ounces, I believe, a piece. So that's like, I think it was like 11 to uh, 16 ounces. One good thing about Crocs is you have a lot of toe coverage. So depending how overgrown uh, your campsite is, you have a good coverage. It still kind of feels like a shoe and less like a sandal. And also you have a heel strap that you can use. I'm not sure if you are able to do river crossings or water crossings in Crocs. Uh, most shoes or sandals with heel straps that enables you to be able to cross water without it pulling your shoe off. So I'm not sure if Crocs work in that. Let me know in the comments if you know. I genuinely would like to know if you can cross water in Crocs without them uh, coming off. So the first shoe that I bought initially, I really cannot not recommend this enough as a camp shoe, is a sandal like this. Um, this is a Keen actually. Now there's like, uh, I've seen Chacos, which are really nice sandals, nice sandals for hiking. I could definitely hike a backpacking loop in these shoes. Uh, there are things I don't like. They're not very breathable for being a sandal. And once a rock gets down in through these holes, uh, you can't just shake it out like a normal sandal. So it kind of has its uh, its cons, but I, I do like these for like kayak camping if I'm doing stealth camping and I don't want to wear shoes while I'm in a boat because I just like getting in and out of the water, walking in it, getting wet. Um, this is a great shoe for that, I think, uh, especially wild camping because you don't know what kind of brush you're going to be walking through and everything. So it's a little bit more protected with the toe cap here. And these definitely have their place, but as a camp shoe, this weighs one pound a piece or, or per shoe, it's a pound. So strapping on two pounds of shoes just to have a camp shoe, in my opinion, is way more overkill than you need. So a pair of sandals that I bought as a camp shoe to try, wasn't sure if I was really gonna like them or not, are these Zero Shoes uh, Z Trek. So these are the thinnest model of these minimalist sandals that uh, Zero Shoes makes. They're actually slightly heavier than the Z Trail, which is a little bit thicker. And I think the reason behind that is those are a little bit softer foam. This is more of just a straight rubber. Very minimalist sandal. You feel everything on the trail when you're walking in these. It's definitely an acquired uh, taste, I think. But I really want to try these because they, they really take up no room at all. You can even roll them up if you want. So this shoe in a, this is a size nine. And by the way, if you're going to look at these, you have to use their online uh, sizing thing. Cause normally I wear like 10 and a half uh, shoes, but their sizes are way off. So I got a nine in these and they work pretty well. But the reason why I went with these, I wanted a camp shoe that was decently lightweight 
that I could cross water and do water crossings. These actually having a traditional Z pattern uh, sandal strap uh, setup with a heel strap enables you to walk through water without them feeling like they're getting pulled off your feet. These actually strap uh, really tight on your feet and them being like kind of minimalist and lightweight, I kind of figured that they wouldn't feel heavy or feel like uh, the water's getting under them, pulling them off my feet while I'm, while I'm uh, doing water crossings. Doing water crossings barefoot has its challenges. Um, one being it can be super slippery, uh, underwater algae and rocks can be very, very tricky sometimes if you don't have that added tread of a shoe. Number two, you can't always see where you're stepping depending on how deep it is or how murky the water is. And you can step on some pretty sharp rocks that just hurt and they'll throw off your balance and that's pretty much the last thing you want to happen. Water crossings can be pretty scary while backpacking. The thought that you can be several miles out, soak all your gear and just be screwed. Definitely something that uh, you need to consider. If you are not comfortable crossing water, I, I do suggest getting a good water crossing shoe or just do like a lot of people do and leave your shoes or boots on, cross them, uh, just get wet, deal with it, and try to dry them out of camp. So the Zero Shoes work great for water crossings. As far as a camp shoe, I do wish they were a little bit lighter. I might actually uh, buy some of the Z Trails and try those because they're just a little bit lighter. I don't normally bring these on super long backpacking trips. I just think they're just a little bit too heavy. When I'm packing up my gear for a backpacking trip, I take in consideration how long I'm gonna be out there and, and how difficult it's gonna be. So I usually have like several options of gear as well well as like camp shoes and I'll bring whatever I feel like is a good weight for that trip. So I don't mind carrying a little bit extra weight if it's going to be easier or shorter days, but if it's a super long um, trip, what I will end up doing is bringing a camp shoe, something like this, and this is your standard 99 cent flip flop. Now this is actually super tiny because it's my wife's and I actually have to get a new pair of these because my dog decided to eat mine. So super cheap flip flops like these are very light. This one's very small as you can tell, but it only weighs uh, an ounce and a half, which is 44 grams. So a pair in my size is gonna weigh a little bit more, but still cutting tons of weight off of your camp shoe. The downside to flip-flops like these is you absolutely cannot cross water in them. If you've ever tried walking through water in flip-flops, without that heel strap, um, they just don't come up with your foot. The water will just, they'll take them right off. So these are not really a multi-use piece of backpacking gear. Uh, given that you can't cross water in them. I will say that I like my camp shoes to be able to be semi-comfortable that if something would happen to my feet, if I get blistered real bad or anything, I could, if I wanted to, hike out or hike a few miles or a day in my camp shoes. My Zero shoes, I can definitely hike in those. Flip-flops would be a little bit more challenging, but I could still do that. So my recommendation for flip-flops like these, um, a lot of times you'll find ones that are a little bit stiffer, better quality foam, and those will be a little bit heavier. Uh, ones like the ones I'm holding are very, very squishy, cheap foam. And these are like the kind you probably get at like Dollar General. I like the cheaper, squishier ones because they're lighter. Although the quality is not as good, they will rip and break much sooner than the other kinds. So a little DIY camp shoe that I've seen people make, and this would be one that I would say would not be good for hiking in, is some people just take an insole from a shoe, cut a couple holes in it, tie some type of cordage around it, and make a, pretty much make a sandal out of an insole. So that's a really cool idea for a camp shoe. I'd actually like to give that a try just, just to do it. Probably not great for hiking in, but if you're looking for like the lightest possible camp shoe, that is definitely an option. There are some traditional shoes or minimalist shoes on the market that are super, super light, probably around the upper weight range of the Crocs. So camp shoes are really just a luxury on the trail. You don't need them, but they will make your camp experience a lot nicer. I feel like it's one of those things that you might not think about if you're new to backpacking until you get to camp, until you really want to just get out of your boots and walk around in something else. 
So it's definitely a topic worth talking about. In the comments below, let me know what you guys wear for camp shoes. I'm always down to try new things and I, I like hearing others' opinions on things like this. I'm sure there's other options out there that I didn't think about and I didn't discuss. But that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Hit that subscribe button for more videos like this in the future and we'll see you on the next one.